and here it is the anthem avm 90 processor pre-pro processor um man you know hearing great things about this um you know I'm, i have paradigm speakers you guys probably know by now so anthem is the sister company of paradigm they're kind of owned by the same conglomerate i guess um they're essentially the you know like sister anthem makes the electronics and paradigm makes the speakers so you know there's, there's a good synergy there for sure avm 90 is um you know their flagship processor it's i mean i think it's about as close to end game as, as you need to get um especially for a i'll say a conventional processor Yes, I know that the, the Trenovs out there, right? Um, Trenovs is, is whole another beast and it's proprietary and has like a software based platform that allows it to just kind of go way beyond, honestly, what a conventional processor can do. But again, the lower end Trenov is still like $18,000, right? So you kind of get what you pay for there. Um, this isn't obviously in that bracket, but for conventional processors, this, this should be messing with the best of them. Um, just unboxed it. I didn't know I'm not going to do an unboxing video. To me, that's pretty un uninteresting. And honestly, this particular unboxing would have been pretty un uninteresting. There wasn't really a whole lot in the box. Um, processor, the um, Arc Genesis kit, and then, you know, the remote, like a bag with the remote and stuff. That's pretty much it. So my plan is to um, just kind of get it hooked up, get the speakers connected, you know, um, get my, my HGMI connected. Um, and then uh, from there... I will try to run arc and such later so get things connected turn it on that's my initial plan not really trying to calibrate and all that stuff i have a long weekend this weekend but not like i have don't have anything else to do it's going to be you know full as usual so i'll do what i can but i expect that you know it'll probably be a few weeks honestly before i really kind of can say i got things dialed in and arc kind of run it with decent results and i can really just kind of take in the sound right um not going to happen right away, but get it, try to get things hooked up tonight here, um, get it going. And then once I, you know, feel comfortable and I feel like I have a decent, um, impression, uh, I'll probably follow up with just like a first impression type of thing. And, you know, like I said, later down the road, um, I'll probably do like a more formal or not formal, but more final review. Once I had a chance to really check it out with different things from, um, hooking up all my components to it, trying different movies, TV, gaming, everything, and make sure everything works. Talk about the bugs, that kind of stuff. And then just talk about the general sound quality. Um, I am hope, you know, hopeful. I'm optimistic. Uh, it's always kind of like, to me, hit or miss when it comes to like audio and um, equipment. It's, it's relatively subjective, you know, how much of a difference it really is and how much better it really is, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I hope that I can hear at least some improvement in the sound. But the bigger thing for me is just um, the room correction, you know, being able to kind of tame this room a, a bit better and the bass response. Um, you know, I, I mentioned in my channel, like that was one of my issues with my existing system is just not so much like the sub capability. We know that those SV subs can rock, um, but it's just how it's dialed in, you know, how it really sounds from my listening position and how it's integrated with the other speakers. I'm hoping that the Arc Genesis and just the AVM90 level at, as a whole would be able to get me there. Um, and yeah, other than that, start of a new generation. You know, I'm hoping this thing could last me um, quite a while. Things haven't changed a whole lot, right, in the, in the processor front in terms of like the decoding. You know, it used to be like, you know, Adobe Digital became Adobe, you know, Digital Plus and then Adobe ProLogic and ProLogic 2 and 2X and 2Z and then it's True HD. And, and like it was all of these evolutions of like the processing that was like, okay, if you wanted to be cut at edge, you want to get lossless, you need to upgrade to get Adobe True HD, right? If you want to get a certain number of channels, you know, now Adobe True HD can support 7.1, you want to get 7.1. Then it was 11 channel, that kind of thing. They have been pretty stagnant, right? And what's good about this one is um, there's already a lot of room for me to grow. So first of all, this processor is 19 channels total. Um, you know, I have 11. Well, if you can count my sub as a channel, it's, well, it's 11, 11.1 technically, right? Um, so I have plenty of room to grow into this if I, not in this space, <laughs> but you know, in the future I can add more speakers, add some whiffs, add some more Atmos speakers or whatever, and I can grow into that, you know, so, so that's, um, pretty cool, you know, and on that front, this also is an 8K, um, you know, processor, uh, is comes with the full H HDMI 2.1 board. So, um, you know, it can serve as a hub for, you know, 8K pass through and 4K 120, which is really at this point being primarily useful for gaming. 
Um, but down the road, you know, down the road, right? Um, could be AK, AK TVs become a lot more viable and a lot cheaper. You know, my next TV could be an AK TV. The next, you know, gen consoles or whatever probably will be 8K capable or at least more so. Um, so, yeah, I can grow into that. You know, once 8K really becomes online, that's not something I have to be like, oh, I'm missing out now. I got to upgrade my processor kind of thing. Right. So there's a lot of room in here to grow, which is cool. Um, yeah, processor technology does change. At some point, there's going to be a new HDMI spec. It's going to be a 2.1 whatever um it may be that the boards are upgradable anthem has said that so in theory if something like that happens i guess i can pay for like just an upgrade for the board we'll see you know that's down the road i don't think hdmi 2.1 is nowhere near being utilized now so um, we'll probably be good for a while so yeah um should be cool uh, I'm, I'm excited to try a different platform i've been with morans for quite a while um ultimately for i don't know somewhere around like 10 years or 12 years or so by now um all right folks so just thought i should document this i guess really quickly i'm in the process of packing up my marantz 8802a this was one of the first one of the first um consumer processors that had dolby atmos and dtsx and it had an oral 3d upgrade which i never got um, but this, you know, has served me well. I had it for about seven years now. Um, you know, I, there really wasn't a whole lot of reason to upgrade, honestly. Um, you know, Adobe Atmos, Adobe Atmos, things haven't changed a whole lot. Sound quality was great. But previous to this, I had a Moran's AV7, 7005, kind of like their entry level, um, pre Adobe Atmos. It was seven channel only. This is 11 channel. And for years, I mean, I got this, um, I want to say around 2015, and um, I only had seven channels hooked up to it up until I moved into this house about three years ago. So for years, I was just like, yeah, I'm not even really even getting the maximum of it. Um, happy to be able to put it in here and, you know, um, get it connected with the seven full seven channel setup. Sounded great. Um, I got a, I got a great deal. You know, the AVM90 from Anthem was like, Something that when I first heard about it, I was like, I think that might be the one great combination of just like, you know, world class sound quality with, um, you know, a great feature set that pretty much gives me everything I would need. Morantz and Denon always threw everything like the kitchen sink approach. Right. They they I mean, this was like, again, even their newer 8805 doesn't really do much in terms of features. It has a little bit better streaming capability. Um, you know, I think they they integrated Helios um for the denim Moran's thing but i mean like you know fundamentally it's pretty much it was it wasn't really much that changed so um great great pre-processor i just wanted to say that um you know again it's 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 not the final word in you know sound quality but at the time you know for the price point um you know Moran's was yeah i remember the reviews were just stellar raving on this thing it's still a um sound and vision you know um you know, top component in this in this price class. Uh, it was a um, stereophile A rated, you know, preprocessor for years. And, and then the 8805 came out and, and it's now, at the, you know, the A rated. So, you know, great, great pre pro. Um, there obviously are things that are better in terms of like the ultimate sound quality, you know, from a DAC standpoint, circuitry standpoint, you know, being able to separate the sounds. And then the other weakness is the room correction, you know, so odyssey at the time was like one of the first kind of really premier um room correction suites that could you know analyze your room and get you something great and this had the highest quality odyssey at the time and you know pretty much shortly thereafter when this came out look at this look at this back here nice copper copper plated stuff but um yeah pretty much since it came out um you know odyssey kind of went to the, I mean, a lot of things came out that were that were that topped it. Let's just put it like that. We got Derek, we got Anthem Room Correction, we got Room Perfect at the higher end, and other stuff. There's a lot of things out there that you know kind of left Odyssey in the dust, so to speak. So, for me, um, you know, again, I got a I got a nice a nice deal from a local dealer. Um, he agreed to let me trade this in, so I'm able to get some credit from this, um, and then get the Anthem at a, at a discount. So, you know, Anthem is going to give me the Anthem Room Correction, which you know is all the rave one of the you know best um room correction suites out there anthem is still actively updating it too so that's good um you know it gets me uh 
superior DAX and circuitry, supposedly for, you know, even higher end sound quality. Um, and it gets me um, 19 channels. You know, this is 11 channels. So four subwoofer channels independent, which is one of the one of, if not the only uh, preprocessor to do that. And then, you know, 15 core channels. Right. So that gives me room to upgrade. I'm not adding more speakers in now and not into this room, but, you know, down the line, um, that gives me this flexibility. If I wanted to add more at most speakers or add more with, you know, uh, that's that's great. So um, it's an event era, you know, and um, it, it, it's 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 a sad, a sad occasion. I mean, I think, like I said, this this amp, this preprocessor, I'm sorry, has has come a long way. And, um, you know, it's kind of representative of the advent of a new era. You know, this is kind of like one of the first new gen Atmos 3D audio type of thing. So, but yeah, it is, you know, it's been like nine years, I think, since this thing came out almost 10 years ago. So I just would like to get like the latest and greatest, you know, just a more sophisticated process or sophisticated room correction and see what that can really do, you know, in my space. So looking forward to it. So long, uh, Marantz, 8002A. Um, and, I, you know, again, I love them. You've seen the other video. They're, they've been great. Um, works well. And they just have everything. And everything's pretty easy. To, you, you use the experience pretty easy. Um, I've heard mixed things about Anthem and the room correction stuff. Like, it can be pretty, it can be as involved as you would like it, I guess. But I love the idea of the extra, you know, just the custom customization capability there. The flexibility. Um, having different modes and different configuration, different settings for music, for night, for day, for you know, action movies and not like you can kind of configure things and opt, you know, the however you like. Um, being able to see the details of what the response is in the room from, from each speaker and that kind of thing. Like, yeah, I'm not going to get too crazy into that, but it's good to have and you know, it's good to know that I can kind of tweak the experience and continue to optimize the experience as time goes on. So, looking forward to that, man. And you know, hopefully, this is like the last. I mean, in game in the sense that again, there, there really isn't too much more you can get, you know, in terms of sound quality, especially in uh, in terms of features as well. There's a couple of things missing from here, which uh, main, well, one thing mainly, I guess, is just full on room support. Uh, well, two things: room support and then Oro 3D. Oro 3D is another 3D format like Dolby Atmos and DTSX. Um, honestly, I mean, the old Morans technically had an upgrade that I could have paid to get it. I never even thought about it. Oro 3D isn't really used that much. The reason why people talk about it in the AV world is apparently the built-in up mixer is really good. It's probably arguably the best up mixer for taking non-3D sources and making it sound 3D. And that's, that would be pretty cool. I mean, if it was there, I would say, hey, that's a great little bonus. I would probably take advantage of it, but it's not. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no sweat off my back. I'm not not tripping on that. Same thing with Rune. Honestly, I've never used Rune. Um, so I, it's not something I'm missing or even wondering about. Maybe at some point it's like if I get to try it or sample it or again, try to do something more more um, involved with my overall, uh, you know, room setup with music and trying to have like an all, all, uh, all house type of music or something. Rune might be like, oh, it would be good to have that. But right now for what I use it and what I'm looking for is fine. The main, the basics are there. <laughs> Not even the basics. The well beyond the basics are there. So uh, again, I'll I'll check back in. Um, maybe a few days. Maybe over the weekend. I'll see how it how it is. I'll see how it turns out, and uh, see if I have time. But if not, um, expect to get um, an impression video from me and a full review o over the next couple weeks, hopefully. So, AVM ninety new generation begins. Appreciate it.